All right, shalom, 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 everybody. This is a quick little chop stash um, that we're gonna do real quick. Um, we're not, I just did a lesson, so we opened up with prayer and I let people know we were gonna do this chop session after the lesson. So we're just gonna jump right in. Uh, we just, for the Sabbath, uh, for Shabbat Eve and the Sabbath yesterday and um, a day and a half ago, we did our lesson on the dietary law and it was a two-part series. So this is an addendum to that. Um, we made a playlist. I'm gonna add this lesson to the playlist. So this will be the third video. We're going to, I'm gonna go over with you why I don't eat um, duck and why duck uh, to me is on Google it. You're gonna get a lot of confusion on it. Um, most people, most people who go with just a basic understanding of kosher they um they'll say it's okay to eat duck um people who go who go deeper with it and do a little bit more research tend to be tend to say no it's not okay to eat duck also i'm just giving background for clarification also um, and we covered this um, on the lesson during the dietary lesson, the background on this, but we're going to, I'm going to go over it again a little bit right now too. So everybody knows where this, uh, where this is coming from. Um, even in Judaism, the ones who, the, the ones for the ones where they do say it's okay to eat duck, the majority of people who practice Judaism just don't eat duck. Like even if you go to a lot of, even if you go to kosher grocery stores, yeah, even the ones where the people, where their rabbis will say that duck is kosher, you don't find um, duck there a lot because the reason why is this in a gray area. I'm going to explain why it's a gray area, which we did a little bit when we did the lesson on the dietary law, but I'm going to explain again. And, and then I'm going to show you why I don't eat duck while I lean towards um, not eating not eating it. Because I told you all that during the dietary lesson, but we like to prove all things. So um, I want to show you scripturally. Also, too, if the question ever comes up about it, we'll have this video to reference so we don't have to take 30 minutes to an hour out of our dietary lesson just to deal with eating duck, right? So <clears throat> let me lower myself. So Leviticus chapter, we're going to start here at Leviticus chapter 11 and, and verse 13, and we're going to read down to verse 19. All right. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. So the any of these birds are an abomination for you to eat. You're not supposed to eat these birds. That's what fowls mean. Amen. And since we're reading God's word, women, you need to cover your heads. Men, you need to uncover your heads. And we will turn and face Jerusalem and pray again. We are, even though we already just did that for the previous lesson, but we'll do it again. We'll do the Lord's prayer this time. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. So Leviticus 11 and 13, and these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls, meaning birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ostrich and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind. All right, so notice here, it said you can't eat eagles, ostriches, osprey, vultures, and the kite. And then the key word though here is after his kind. Right. So that means you can't eat any. And I'm going to pull up the one we want. Hold on. Hold on. Is it class?
All right, yeah, there we go. So you know how you know how um, you have in the animal kingdom, you have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and under orders, you can have like a suborder um, or a subfamily, right? So when it says here after his kind, this means you can't eat any other, you can't eat any other animals, excuse me, that's in that same family or that same order, right? So you're, you should avoid all, all animals that are in that same family or order, okay? All right, now, And I'll I'll pull up later and show you with this with this as well. All right, with duck because we're going to be thorough um, this afternoon. Amen. All right. So notice here it said after his kind. So that means any any of these types. You said, see how it says eagle, osprey, osprey, vulture, kite, right? Or any other type of bird that's in their same family or same order. You should not eat them. That's what it means here after his kind. This is the same language that was used when Noah brought the animals onto the ship and he took two, uh, they went on two by two of every unclean animal and they went in pairs of seven for every clean, for all the clean animals by their kind. And that's how he was able to fit them all on the ship because he wasn't taking all of the animals. It was just by their kind, right? Animals can reproduce Going up to, do, do, do. so animals can reproduce. No, I pull up my right chart. Yeah, so animals can reproduce going up to, um, almost basically up to like class. So if they're in the same order, the same family, for sure, you can through evolution and natural selection. You could have, over the course of time, you could have got more animals again, all these different species of animals again over time after the flood. He would only need to take one from like each uh, class or order, right? But that's just a side note, learning on your way to learning. This is the same, so the same language is used there with Noah when he's bringing them onto the ship. It's the same language used here. That's what it means after its time, okay? So to give you an example, so it wouldn't be like, oh, if it named, a, if it named, if it said here, thou shall not eat a cocker spaniel, that means you can't eat any dogs. That means you can't eat any wolves. That means you can't eat any coyotes. Like if it's a dog, you understand? No canine, no canine family animals, right? I think there's like canid for them, but that would be the point. That's what after his kind means. So you can't eat any type of eagle, any ostrich, any uh, any osprey. You can't eat the vote. You can't eat any vulture, and you can't eat any kite after its kind, right? And for ostrich and osprey, you can look that up. You can't eat it. Same thing with a kite. Kite t e. We're dealing with duck because that's the one that that's the one that comes up that people eat a lot outside of uh, chicken and turkey, right? And chicken and turkey is clean. And so we're just going to deal with right now the confusion with duck. But I'm going to show you why I don't eat duck. Why biblic why I'm not going to eat duck from my understanding of the dietary law. I'm not willing to risk it. All right. I'm going to show you from a, you know, from a um, from a biblical and logical standpoint. But even from a logical standpoint, if there's any confusion, circumspect means you should stray on the side of what? Caution. All right, it says here, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuck owl, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the coromont, and the great owl. So notice no hawks, right? No owls. It says the owl, and after his kind. Then it names some other owls, but it doesn't matter. You can't eat owls, period. It already told you you can't eat the owl. And it says after his kind. So any, any type of owl cannot be eaten. It's just giving you more details now. It says here, and the little owl, and the coromont, and the great owl, and the swan. This is where the confusion comes in. 
and the pelican and the gear eagle and the stork, the heron after their kind and the lapwing in the back. All right, so the confusion comes in here with the with duck, with the word here that's translated as swan here in the King James um, English, King James uh, translation. So a couple things I want to point that I want to point out with that. Let me see if y'all can see. Yeah. All right. So a couple things I want to point out to my church with this in relation in relation to whether or not you can or cannot eat um, duck. All right. One. Some people in other translations, and I'm going to put it up in a minute. Show you the other translations. In other translations. They um, will translate the word swan as another type of owl, right? Okay. So from being circumspect and no, they don't really know what this word, they don't really know what this word means from the original Hebrew. I'm going to come back to that in a second too. Like no one really knows. It's just a best educated guess. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. So, um, You've, we've already been, some some of the other translations of the Bible will translate that word swan as a type of owl. Okay, we've already read it though where you can't eat any owls. So I already know, I already know I can't eat, eat any owls. That's already been established. So if there's any type of confusion on what this bird is, and some of y'all, and some people are saying, nah, it's a swan. And in the King James, it says it's a swan. You know what I'm going to do from a practical circumspect standpoint? I'm just not going to eat either one. I know for a fact I can't eat any owls. That's already established. There seems to be some confusion on whether this swan and whether you can eat swan or not, right? And since there's confusion and, I, and with the confusion, there's people trying to tell me, no, nah, that's really a type of owl. Well, I already know I can't eat owl for sure. So this is something we confuse on. I'm just not going to eat that either. Okay, that's so that's from a practical that's from a practical standpoint. And I'm going to show you in a minute how swan relates to duck because remember all of these are after their kind, and swan is in the same swan and ducks are in the same family, right? So and remember, you're not supposed to eat things that are in the same family or order. So family is even closer than order. The order that there that swans and ducks are in, because swans and ducks are in the same family, the order they're in is all waterfowl, like water birds, right? And you can see from here, you're not supposed to eat water birds. The pelican is a the pelican is a type of water bird, right? Because that's where it gets its food primarily from, right? So the another thing I want to point out. When it said, so notice how it mentioned you're not supposed to eat the pelican. And then it mentions a type of eagle again. And you, it already told you you can't eat eagles. All right. The pelican, when it names here the, the pelican, what do ducks and swans and pelicans have in common different than all other birds? Their beaks. They don't have, their beaks are not designed to eat the same type of food that the rest of the bird, that all the other birds eat. Okay. So that's number one. And they already told you the pelican, they already, no one doubts that it's saying pelican there in the Hebrew. Then also when it said for the one, for a pelican, pelicans have webbed feet. All the other birds don't, all, only water birds have webbed feet. So like swan has webbed feet. No, all the other birds don't have webbed feet, right? So he's already let you know like these birds with webbed feet you can't eat a pelican, one of them. So I'm already, that's another reason why I strain with caution. I'm just not going to eat duck. But, um, and because also, and I'm showing you why I'm also, so I'm showing you from a practical reason, but I'm also going to show you why from me, re, you know, as a study to show yourself approved, I'm going to show you how I reason this out and why I land on the side of the King James with it saying swan that it was some type of swan or water bird, like an eaglet or an actual swan, but some type of what some type of water bird, like a swan, in this same family of water birds. And because it's after its kind, and swan and ducks and swans are in the same family, 
that means I can't eat that. Okay? So it's just like how when it says you can't eat pork, that it, that it means all, all types. Okay? That means you can't go to, that means you can't go to Africa and get a wild warthog and be like, well, this ain't, this is, this is a warthog. This ain't a pig, right? No, you can't eat anything of its kind, of, of its kind. Okay. All right. Hopefully this is making sense. So it's the same thing with swans and ducks. Swans and ducks are in the same family. All right. Now, the, but I'm going to show you why I even reason it, why I end up landing on the other, on the side of the swan. So another thing, because I'm not going to, uh, I don't want to pull up the, you guys can pull up the interlinear on your own time. And with this one, for the word um, swan, for the word swan, read everything in there and read some other, go and go and also go read some uh, uh, commentaries. The commentaries are biased towards it. Most of them, not all. Um, I say it's like, Two thirds are saying it's not swan. One third is. Um, and when you look in blue letter and you look at the interlinear and all that, read everything because it's going to give you both. It's going to give you uh, both views. All right. But look it up on your own time. I'm going to give you a brief little paraphrase uh, synopsis of everything. Nobody knows what the word means. Nobody really knows what the word means in Hebrew. It's used three times in the Bible, twice here in Leviticus 11, once in Deuteronomy 14. So in both instances, it's where um, the dietary law is being discussed. The hiccup is in, Deut in Deuteronomy 14, it's only mentioned one time and it's translated into King James as swan like it is here, right? And it's referring to the same bird here. But the other time that it's the other time the word here um, that's translated as swan, the Hebrew word, the other time it's used here in Leviticus chapter 11 is in reference to a mole, the animal of the mole, okay, which has nothing to do with a bird. It's in a whole different context of animals. This is why it's, and if you, if you, when you take a deep dive in this, which I've already done. Um, what you will come away with is nobody knows what the word means. These are your, our two best educated guesses best off in the Hebrew based off of the root word, right? And the, uh, the root word goes back to meaning to breathe heavily, right? To breathe heavily. So that's why if you ever seen owls, they have big chests. That's why it lends towards that as well, but it can also, it also lends towards ducks and swans because water birds, they breathe deep breaths and they breathe heavy too because they have to be able to breathe underwater. So it could apply to, it could apply to um, them as well too. The other one has, the other thing is it has to do with many colors, like an animal having many different colors. And that's another reason why, because if you ever look at, I go with ducks and Swan here, because if you look at water birds, ducks come in many different colors. They got a whole bunch of, they have green, gray, black, white, all over them, right? So that's just some background on the root word for it. Now, If you want to do, if you want to put some beans with the yellow rice, uh, you can do that too if you want, if we have any. All right. This is the church's website. But you know when I say beans, I mean pinto beans. You do black beans for yourself. Uh, you go to the church's website www.firstresurrectionfellowship.com click on the dietary law we have a resource here 
to help people with um, keeping the dietary law and what's clean and what's unclean. And we went over this when we did the lesson on the dietary laws, and we're not going to go over it again. But I want to show you dealing with dove and duck. So we have here dove and duck, Leviticus 11, 18. Please read and decide for yourself. And then we also say see, P, see uh, page 11 for why. Um, for dove, that's because doves are pigeons, and it's hard for some people to you, – you can – doves and pigeons are kosher. When the Bible is allowed, when the Bible is saying for them that they can eat dove and pigeon, which is also pigeons, that's not talking about an urban, that's not talking about an urban New York pigeon. They didn't have any urban New York pigeons at that time that was walking around eating garbage and trash and select, you know, how the urban, because LA got them too. You be at the train station, you, they might, uh, you spit on the ground, they go eat that up. They in the trash can eating a eating that they're basically like um, big flying rats. Um, so again, the Bible tells us to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Study to show yourself approved. Um, the Bible wants us to be smart, and you use your you know you're not commanded. You could be vegetarian if you want. You're not commanded to eat any of the to eat any of the stuff, even of the clean ones. That's just, it's just telling you those are the meats you can eat if you want to. So common sense should tell you not to eat, a, you're not going to eat an urban pigeon, okay? But that's where that comes in. And there, and for other reasons there, there'll be a confusion. There's confusion with that. But doves are clean to eat. Just don't eat, uh, just don't eat a, whatchamacallit, you know, one of them urban pigeons. You understand? Does that make sense? All right. You know, and or you can just domesticate, domesticate them and do it that way. But don't, um, you're not, I would not eat a New York or an LA or a Chicago pigeon. All right. Now with duck, let's go to the last page. This is the last page. Where's the translation? Okay. All right. So this asks for Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 18. This has all the trans, um, not all, but most of the translations for Leviticus 11 and 18. And this is where you can see where some, a lot of the other translations, they don't use swan. So this is where the, uh, where the confusion comes in, right? So, for example, let me try to make it bigger. I think I would have to download it to make it bigger instead of pulling it up from the screen. Yeah, that's as big as I'm going to leave it. I'll just read it to you guys from here. But the NIV, the, the NIV, instead of saying swan, it says the white owl. And instead of saying pelican, it says the desert isle, owl. The New Living Translation says the barn isle, owl, and the desert isle instead of the, instead of the pelican. The English Standard Version says the barn owl, the tawny owl. All right. The end is crazy. And I was... This is my belief in, this is where, this is my belief in faith because I believe God, I believe God's scripture unequivocally. And so when it says he put everyone, all the kings and presidents that God puts them in power, right? So that's either for our good or, or for our bad. And King James having the Bible being translated, being for our good. So me personally, the few instances in the Bible, the few times um, in the Old Testament where they go with the Septuagint instead of the Masoretic text, I think those times are right times and gives more, just me personally, and gives more clear and gives more um, clarity, right? For us in these for us in these times, as languages change over time. Uh, and things can be confusing. Like in this case, with this word, 
how no one really knows what it is in the Hebrew, right? And it's, confu and it's confusing people. They don't know if it's talking about an owl or if it's talking about a swan, right? So, but I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that in just a second. But there's a couple of times where they go with that instead of the, um, uh, with that are the Latin, like the Vulgate. There's a couple times where they do that. But anyways, I digress. It says here, the, the Berrien Study Bible calls it the White Owl. Um, the New American Standard Bible calls it the White Owl. Pretty much all these translations, except for um, the King James, the American King James, and the Dua Rames Bible, I don't know how to pronounce that, um, has swan. The Darby Bible has swan. Webster's Bible translation has swan. And Young's Literal, and you know I rock with the Young's Literal, um, they have swan. All right. Now, so I mentioned to you how you can look up, I mentioned to you how you on your own time can um, look at the interlinear for that Hebrew, for the Hebrew word that was there for swan. And like I said, no one really knows, no one really knows what it means. The, that being said, since no one knows what it really means and if you're confused, and it's the same thing with the Red Sea. Well, it was a C of Reed, even though even in the Hebrew, you it's still referring to a sea, you know, not a lake or a river or a pond of, of reeds, but in that, the actual sea. In the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, and this is the Greek translation of the Old Testament hundreds of years before the New Testament, right? So they were, and in the New Testament, a lot of times they quote it from the Septuagint because most of the people they were dealing with knew Greek, didn't even know Hebrew, um, including of the Israelites. So just like how in the Septuagint is not reeds, it's clearly their word for Red Sea. In the Septuagint, it's swan. It's not, it's the Greek word for swan, and I'm going to show you that. And so I go with out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a matter be established. And since with the whole owl, whether it's an owl or a barn or, or owl or swan in the Hebrew and no one knows, right? Well, the Septuagint is a second witness from ancient times, right? From the time period of Old Testament time, because that's when the, the Septuagint was compiled. The Septuagint was translated and put together um, in between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament, right? So the Septuagint was put together before the Maccabees, okay? So basically the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Bible, was put together in between, we're dealing with Purim now today, it was Purim. So from the time of Esther and Purim to Hanukkah, Feast of Dedication, in between that time in history, that's when the Septuagint was translated, right? And it's the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. So in the Greek trans and uh, the Jews of that time co-signed this translation, right? This Greek translation, they co-signed it, gave it the thumbs up. So the in it, it says swan. So for me, I'm like, well, if you're confused on what it says here in the Hebrew, and we don't know what the word is, in subsequent generations later, they saw fit to call it a swan in the Greek, right? During the same time, this is still during Old Testament times. And in their mind, they, they're going to think, oh, they thought it was a swan. So I go with it being a swan because of that. And that's how out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a matter be established. That would be a second. That would be a second witness for me. Also, too. Um, but they have ones that uh, they have, you know, evidence that could and that could go that people could try to bring up for the other side. And I know it because anything I look up, I look up all sides. So some of the of the two targums 
I know one of them says it's more like an owl, right? Of uh, the of uh, the two targums. But for anybody, so to put this into perspective for you, anybody reading the anybody reading the uh, Leviticus eleven and verse eighteen during the time of Esther, all the way down to the time of Jesus, they would have thought it was a swan because in the translation that we, because in the Greek translation of the Old Testament from that time, that's how they tra they translated it as swan. They didn't translate it as an owl, right? Because, and remember, no one know, no, we don't really know with that Hebrew word. Because again, it's only used three times, two times as swan in the KJV, all these, and Young's literal and a couple other. All, all the other translations, the NIV, New Living, as we've read here, them two times is translated as like a white owl or a, a barn owl, right? Then the only other time is in Leviticus 11, also in Leviticus 11, and it's for a whole entire different species. It's not even dealing with birds anymore. It's the word used for a mole, right? You can't have the same, you, you can, this is, a, this is why languages develop over time, but we're not gonna figure it out. They obviously knew. They had the same word for this type of bird and this animal that could have been a mole. And even with that, they don't even know if it was a mole. They Some translations say it could be a chameleon or a lizard. And that's why I mentioned the thing about the different colors, because it all goes back to the, the thing they know for, for sure is the root word. And the root word has to do with heavy breathing and heavy breathing in many different colors. So um, given that fact, they don't even know what the word, they don't even, no one even knows what that word really meant in Hebrew at the time. So you're taking your best educated guess out of what it could be. Um, at that time, they knew what it meant in the con in a different context and it didn't have to be explained to them in that context with that one word because their language had not developed yet to the point of having a whole bunch of different words, right? For everything, because again, languages change over time. So when they got those instructions, that one word was sufficient. Um, like 1,200 years later, over a thousand years later, now when it's being translated into Greek, right? They have different. There's multiple different words now, right? And the Greek language is developed. They got multiple different words for things. And when they translated it, it's oh, when they translated it into Greek, it was established. Oh, this means swan. Like this is what when they're using it in this context is swan. So that's how they ended up. That's how they translated. All right. Now, sorry if I'm rambling, but y'all know I like to try to prove prove all things. And like I said, this this is one of the ones that's up to you, but I'm just showing you why I don't. And um, if we do church functions, if you decide still you're gonna eat duck, if we're doing a like if we're doing church functions, don't bring that to the church function. That's just a your you know your, your personal thing. Because here, as me over the church, I'm saying I'm not my I lean on the side of it being uh, unclean. So just to keep things in unison and they're not to be any um, conflict or anything just for official church stuff, uh, no doubt. But if you eat, if you re uh, um, reason it out on your own, on your side and you lean over towards where it's fine, that's on you. This is, um, this is Brenton's Septuagint translation. So an English, this is an English translation of the Greek Septuagint. And so here in the Septuagint, it's a swan, Leviticus 11 and 18, and the red bill and the pelican and the swan, right? Now, So we're going to look at the interlinear 
but this is the Greek. So the Septuagint for the Old Testament, you know how normally when we look at the interlinear, it's the Masoretic text. So it's the, um, the Hebrew. So this is the Greek, the Septuagint, the interlinear. And um, the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Hebrew, but it's still from um, ancient times. So just approving all things like, I remember in the New Testament, they quoted from the Septuagint a lot, the Jesus and the apostles, because the people spoke Greek. So if they were re if they read to them out of the Septuagint, it would have said swan. Um, if I click it, what does it work? How did I? Oh, that's how I did it. <clears throat> I remember I grew. I uh, let's see what y'all see. Y'all see it? Okay. It's not that one. That's purple fish. <coughs> oh, it's this one. I remember. Or is this pelican? No, nah, this one swan. Yeah, this one, this was it. So let me show you. I searched that word because here they don't have it uh, as available to look up what it means in the Greek. So when you search it in the Greek, like the Greek way, just so you see. means swan type of ship. <clears throat> All right, swan type of ship. So that's why I go with um, not eating, I'm not gonna eat duck. And remember we read that is after their kind. So just to show you, so this is Wikipedia, swan. Swans are birds of the genus Cyagenus within the family Anatide. Remember it said we can't eat after their kind, right? Anatide. Anatide are the biological family of water birds that includes ducks, geese, and swans, right? So if I can't, if the Bible says you can't eat swan and you can't eat any of these birds, after their kind, remember we read that? Ducks are of the same kind as swan. They're of the same family. But remember I told you it's gonna be the family and the order, all right? Most of the time. So notice here, swans are under the order of these, however you pronounce that, anastroformes. And these are all waterfowls, all water birds. Right. And remember, they had our, and remember the scripture in Leviticus 11, it had mentioned you can't eat herons. Herons are water, are water birds. You can't eat pelicans. Those are water birds. Right. So you can't eat it. it you can't, when it says after kind, that's of any, any animal of the same family or same order. Right. All right. Shalom.